Hey, lordy, lordy, look at the time. Empowered. Welcome to another episode of the Empowered Podcast. Um, today is a very special episode because we are joined by Troy. I'm going to let Troy tell you who he is and what he does. Um, but I've been looking forward to this one. Uh, I've been following uh, Troy's career for a while and I'm you know, really excited to, to chat to him. Um, so yeah, Troy, do you want to just tell people a little bit about what you do? Yeah, well, I'm a prof- professional boxer. Uh, currently I'm the IBF European Super Welterweight Champion and the former British Champion. Uh, box at obviously suit well away, which is eleven stone. Um firstly obviously we go right back to when I was a kid. Um my dad took me to the boxing gym when I was ten year old back then, Darlington Boxing Gym. Back then I was too young to compete. Um you couldn't box until you were eleven, might have been twelve, so a little bit too young to compete and I was going every single day having spars, I had spars with lads that were boxing. And I just I didn't enjoy it to be fair. I was just gone because my dad took me, but that was because obviously where we grew up, where we grew up, we grew up in in Dalton, Firth Moor. It was it was quite quite uh, a racial part of the town, and obviously with my dad having the back on to, of what he had when he was when he was younger, he was a bit of a bit of the man in his day. So obviously, as we were growing up, we got the backlash of 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 his. Um, his past, like with the place and and whatnot, so it was, obviously it was a bit of a tough upbringing. Um, in, in that sense, there was eleven eleven kids, five um, five boys, six girls. So obviously, my dad took me to the boxing gym basically just to learn how to look after myself. And like I said, obviously I was too young to be so I got bored. Left the boxing gym, went and started playing football from the age of eleven up until I was sixteen. Played for twenty first All Stars. Um, and then a, lo- a local boxing gym opened up on the corner from where I lived. And when I was 17 year old, I walked walk back in the boxing gym and never looked back. Obviously, here we are. I'm a professional now. I bo- I previously, I boxed for Team Great Britain, went to numerous tournaments all around the world, and now I hold a professional record of 21 wins, one draw, one loss, with 15 knockouts. So you didn't actually enjoy boxing when you first started. So it was kind of, um, you were just kind of doing it because your dad had taken you there, but it wasn't something that you kind of felt extremely passionate about straight away. No, like obviously I've, I've always loved boxing. I've, me, me, he, me idols were Mike Tyson. So I grew up like watching Mike Tyson, wanting to be Mike Tyson, pretending to be Mike Tyson when I was a kid. You know, like when you used to walk on, you know, when you used to like write your name on, on walls, yeah. I used to write like Troy Tyson. <laughs> right. That sort of thing, like, that's how much I like. I love uh, Mike Tyson. So, yeah, I always loved boxing, but I wasn't in love with boxing when, right. I, when I was a young kid. I was just, like I said, obviously, my dad took me to learn how to stick up for myself. And I was quite nat- nat- naturally gifted. Like, as soon as I walked in the gym, I was sparring within a week. Yeah. I was sparring the kids that were like fight, like competing. So, I was always naturally gifted, but I was just—I think it was because I was too young and I was going every single day, sickening mm-hmm. me off a little bit. But obviously, the older, the older I got, obviously, yeah. It has to be something um, intrinsic as well. It has to be something like inside of you, doesn't it, to want to do something? So sometimes when other people introduce you to something or other people ask you to to do something because it's not off your own back. Like when the, the gym opened at seventeen, you went, "No, that's actually something I'd like to do." Do you think because you were making the choice to be there and you weren't there because? your dad had taken you and because you were there to kind of be able to stick up for yourself, you were making the choice to do it. It, it kind of felt like you were in control and you were doing it because you wanted to do it rather than being taken. Yeah, definitely. Like, I I help coach now um, the where I train. Obviously, it's a pro-arm gym, so that means I'd say an amateur gym, but train professionals too. Right. So I train now with my coach, Craig, and obviously I help out with the kids there. And you, you see it there, you see kids out are there that don't want to be there just because the parents are taking them so like you can't force kids to do what they, what they don't want to do yeah so like you say you always you want your kids to be, you want your kids to be good at something whether it's football boxing and you want your kids to take part in something because it's good um it's good discipline oh, obviously they're not they're not sat at home they're not on the the remotes and controllers and things like that so they're not out on the street so yeah obviously i do like try and persuade kids to get into any sort of sports yeah but at the same time you don't want to push them i think as well you know there's 
there's um, one thing to be said for for standing in a field in the cold and and kicking a ball around and, and not really enjoying that too much and thinking, oh, I don't like this, to like being punched in the face and thinking, oh, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot. Um, it's a lot easier to go and you know play on a football field and and kind of hide from the action. But you know, in a in a boxing gym, if you if you're not enjoying it and you're getting punched in the face, you'll sharp figure out that it's not something that you want, you want to be doing. If it's not something you enjoy, you've yeah. got to kind of. Um, yeah, definitely. It's like I, I believe it's the, one of the hardest sports in the world, and it's the, one of the loneliest sports as well. Because once you're in that ring, there's only you in the ring. So obviously, a football, they've got ten other players to to help them out. Yeah. So when you are in that ring, there's only you. There's you versus your opponent. Yeah. I always say this as well. People don't really in boxing. They they don't really, uh, uh, you know, leave room for for someone having a bad performance. Like, say for example, if a footballer has a bad performance, he's got another ten teammates. He he could they could lose that game and still have a winning record that year and do well. I feel like in boxing, it's very much every single fight. You're very much judged on on that on your last fight as being kind of who you are as a boxer. So even if you're having like a bad day or a bad performance, or you know you haven't rehydrated well, or you don't you feel a little bit under the weather, if that if any of those things happen and you lose, it's still a loss. It's not like oh well you know he, he wasn't having a bad day that day or he was like getting cramps or something. It's just oh well you lost, so that's it. Do you, know, do you feel like it's a very much it's something people really worry about that kind of winning record and. Yeah, one million percent. Like I think it's very harsh. Like like you just said, obviously, obviously people looking in and thinking that like you can't afford to have a bad day in boxing. Yeah, you have a bad day, you 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 you're getting beat. So you can't afford to have these these off nights. You have them. You have them. Everybody mm-hmm. has them, but you can't afford to have them. Um, and a lot of people like blame. When you said people don't blame others in boxing, but I see it all the time. You lose and they blame the coach or they're blaming the, the nutritionist or, or they're blaming yeah, like they're not blaming themselves. They're not saying they haven't trained well or mm. like I say. I, I've I've never not trained well after I trained hundred times in every single fight, so there's nobody to blame. I don't blame the coach, don't blame the nutritionist, mm. don't blame myself. Obviously I give it hundred and ten percent when I'm in there. Like you say, you have off nights, but mm-hmm. you just can't afford to have them. Yeah. And I think sometimes as well, like there's the stylistic things, isn't there? Yeah. Where you might beat somebody who's beaten somebody that might beat you just because of the different styles and things and different different people have, you know, those fighters that their style works particularly poorly against yours and stuff like that. In terms of that being a, a, a case, how how does it how do you actually, you know, I'm not. I don't want to say choose because I don't. I don't think you necessarily choose the fights that you have. But how how do you come to a conclusion of who it is that you're going to fight next? It just. I, f- I think it all depends on where you're ranked, and like, yeah, it all depends on where you're ranked. And obviously, I don't choose who, who I box, or I don't like pick who I want to box. There's fighters out there that, I, that I'd want to box, and things like that. There's fight, fighters out out there that I've wanted to box that I have boxed, but. Just man, obviously your manager sorts sort, sorts it out with your promoter, and obviously they mentioned to you, uh, this, this is a possibility. Do you want to fight him or, like, yeah, think that. So yeah, it's, it's a strange one really. Um, we, we've been we've been we've been offered loads loads of fighters, loads of big fighters, fighters abroad, and I accepted every single one. I'm, I'm a fighter that I've never never ducked a never ducked a fighter. Uh, every opportunity that I've had, I've took it, and yeah, I've come, up, I've, I've won, I've come up short. It's, it, that's, that's the sport we're in. And in terms of c- coming up short, how do you how do you bounce back from that? How do you collect yourself? And do you know is it something that you wanna? If if that is the case, do you wanna kind of fight that person again? Do you feel like it's something that that's is that something that goes through your head? Do you think I want to rematch, or how, how does it how does it work from your perspective when 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 you go through those those situations where you do come up short? Yeah, it's, it was hard. Um, obviously, when I lost my last one, I'd, obviously I lost my British title. It, it was hard because I was so confident going in there. Um, obviously, I've never been beat. So confident going in there, trained so hard, full training camp went hard, uh, went went well. Uh, and like you said, obviously I've got a lot of a lot of pride. So, obviously losing and then having to face people or walk past people and everyone, like even to, like to this day, people still mention, still mention like 
me getting beat, but they just they say, oh, I seen your last fight, but that's what, like, as soon as they say, oh, I watched last fight, you can, I know they watched me getting beat, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, obviously, it wasn't nice, but like you say, obviously, it happens to the best of us. It's, it's how you... 100%. Obviously, I, I believe it's how you come back, and I've learned a lot from that fight, and I just can't wait to get back in there and push on it, on to bigger and better things. Yeah, is the, th is the things now where you think you have done things differently, is the things that you can, like, really focus in on? Because I think even, even if you do lose... It's not always necessarily a terrible thing for people's career. You see a lot of people where they lose and they make an adjustment because they just haven't seen something like that before. Is that something? Is that where you feel like you're at at the moment? Where you feel you can make those adjustments now based on what you've seen? Yeah, definitely. Like I'm at, obviously I'm at, I'm at a stage in my career now where like I just want big fights now. Yeah. Um, be all now though. It's all about the money now. Yeah. Obviously, I'm not just caring for myself now. I've got I've got a baby on the way, so. Obviously, I've got to I've got to support a family now, so obviously I'm not just fighting for myself. I'm fighting for my baby and my missus. So yeah, that, that that's what it's about now. It's about big fights and like you say, obviously I learned a lot from my last fight, and I'll take that on to, into the rest of my career. And in terms of the way that you promoted your last fight, obviously it was really good to see you kind of being more vocal and and being out there. I've you know watched the run up to a lot of your fights, and um, you know you always you know come across extremely professional and not that you didn't in that fight but obviously it was more i saw a lot more personality in that fight is that something that we can expect to see more of in the future do you think yeah definitely like i've been quiet for for so long i've uh, i've just let me fist do the talking but yeah obviously i'm from dalton uh it's just a small town we're from the northeast so if i don't promote myself who's going to promote me because obviously no one can, no one's promote no one's promote me apart from myself so yeah, I've got to I've got to get out there and, and speak out. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. It's um, it's one of those things, isn't it? You don't want to kind of see those fighters who aren't necessarily as good getting further because they're willing to talk more shit, basically. Do you know what I mean? So you, it's kind of it's one of those things where you wanna you wanna find that nice balance between not coming across poorly because I don't think that's representative of who you are, but also you know making enough noise that people are are interested in the fight. Yeah, definitely. You said it's all about balance. I don't want to be out there talking complete shite because <laughs> yeah. you talk shite and then you lose and you it's just you look you look stupid. Do you know what I mean? Or then you say you don't want to be too quiet because nobody's going to take notice of you. I think my last fight, I promoted that really well. Yeah, um, done massive massive figures on Channel Five. I sold around thirteen hundred tickets. So yeah, I promoted that really well. Um, I don't I don't know any any box that sells that many tickets. Yeah, it's a single handed. So. Yeah, it was obviously like you say that was that was a good fight, but again, like a, a big learning curve. Obviously, I went in there with a, a few little problems. I've never mentioned them because it's a, like it's irrelevant. Um, I lost. Yeah. Like, even if I even if I went in there a hundred percent perfect, probably probably still would have lost because you said stylistically, I think Josh boxed the the best Josh Kelly I'd, I'd ever fight, and from what everyone's seen, so he boxed he, he boxed beautiful. I was just. A few, little, a few little problems that obviously I don't really want to go into, but I say I sold 13 and tickets. Yeah. I was getting paid well and it done massive numbers, so I didn't want to pull out. I didn't want to pull out four days before the fight, so yeah. it is what it is, but hopefully, like you say, we can run it back again. I think, it'll, again, it'll do massive numbers. I think it will as well. Who knows? I think it will as well. I think I think that's something that people don't really, don't really talk about, that once you've kind of committed to it, it's very difficult, even if you do pick up an injury or something like that. Um, it's difficult because it gives other people ammunition and stuff, doesn't it? It's a, like you said, it's a very lonely game. Yeah, well, it, 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 like you say, if straight after straight after the fight, if I said I, I was injured, or if I said, I don't know, I say if I was ill, like people, that it's an excuse, you know. What yeah, I, mean? I had no excuses. I trained unbelievably well. I was fit. Like you say, it was just little problems that, that I had. That obviously, I took in the ring, but. It is what it is. Yeah. I, I chose the fight, so there's no regrets. I think as well, one thing that, you know, nobody can take away from you from that fight, from watching it, is, and this is obviously, you know, it was the first fight that you'd lost. And you, people don't know what they're going to do when they lose a fight. Do you know what I mean? If you've, not, if you've not lost to that level before, then people don't know what the, their character until that sort of happens. Do you know what I mean? You feel like yeah. you know, but then, you, you know, you see people... Um, you see people quit or give up on themselves. And I think the one thing 
you didn't do that ever. Do you know what I mean? It looked yeah. like from start to finish, you were still you were still in there till the very end. Do you know what I mean? A lot of people in that position might have, you know, their heart comes into question a little bit. Whereas I think that obviously now that's something that you know in the back of your mind that you're not gonna you're not gonna give up on yourself because a lot of people do. Even yeah, at, even yeah, at the, yeah. t- the top pros, you see people who've got a tendency to do that. They've got a tendency to like you know kind of give up. So at least you know now that that's not something that you're gonna do. So you know that no matter what fight you go into, you're going to be there until the end, kind of pushing on, which is, you know, it's a valuable thing to know about yourself. Um, nobody knows that about themselves until they're in there, you know, those late rounds, like still battling through. So I think it'll be interesting to kind of see um, your next kind of your next fight. And, you know, going into that, you must be looking forward to, to proving yourself. Yeah, definitely. Like I'm We've had a couple of dates uh, mentioned, but until it's announced, then obviously I can't announce nothing. Yeah, of course. But, yeah, I can't. I can't wait to to get get the ball rolling again, and like you say, obviously get back out there. I mean, because a lot of people have a lot of people are can't wait to see me back. Obviously, I've had mm-hmm. loads of messages asking me when I'm back. Can't wait to see you back. Blah blah blah. So hopefully, I'm um, hopefully announce it this week. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, get it back up in the northeast, and then after that, we've got we, we've got a big one coming up just after the summer. So. In terms of the northeast, then, so obviously growing up in Darlington, if people don't know a lot about the northeast, and obviously it's something that I've I've spoken to your brother about before. Obviously, you guys growing up in Darlington probably wasn't the easiest, especially you know the northeast in general isn't a massively like kind of ethnically diverse place. So growing up as like one of the the only families in that sort of area, you felt like did you feel like it was you know you're having a fight a lot anyway just because of the kind of people you know ignorant people in that area but you still love the north east do you still you know do you still feel like it's do you know what i mean north north east is where that is like i always say i'd love to move the yeah i'd love to move but i'd always have players in the north east yeah it would be nice to to move abroad i don't (laughs) think i'd move out in north east i wouldn't move in like a a big city but yeah i'd like to have a place abroad one one, yeah yeah yeah. but uh, yeah obviously I, i love the north east and obviously I believe North East loves me as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, growing up in Dalton, I think only only really when I got to like a uh, teenage years, when I started going to school, that's when obviously when like, I, was, I remember getting bullied in year seven. And I've seen like, yeah, I just got bullied in year seven. I remember, I remember leaving school early, 10 minutes early, just because I knew that obviously there was some guy wait, like some lad waiting outside for me when I have a fight. When I was a kid, I was like, I was dead quiet. I st- I still, I'm still quiet now. Like, it takes me like, it takes me a lot to get riled up. So, obviously, as a kid, I was like, yeah, I was, I was like a dead quiet kid. Uh, I was never co- uh, confrontational until like, obviously, I got sick of getting bullied. I was getting bullied that much where I just got end up getting sick and then I, I end up fighting back. And then, I think since then, obviously, nobody really bullied me because I could sort of stick up for myself. Yeah. Yeah, so it's interesting that that's obviously, you know, that you've obviously gone into like fighting as a as a profession, and I, I wonder how much of you know having to stick up for yourself and and that sort of that sort of thing has has contributed to you know that being your job. Do you, yeah. do you know what I mean? Is, yeah, is yeah. that something that you've is that something you've ever thought about or not? No, I'm not really. Uh, I was not a bad little footballer. I, I'd, like you said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind playing football rather than box. I'd rather be stood out on the field freezing cold right. and get punched in the face. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I think if I didn't box, I don't know what I'd, I don't know what I'd do, to be fair. Yeah. Probably, probably coach. Yeah, well, that's the thing. You said that you were you were coaching as well, mm-hmm. didn't you? So is that is that something that you kind of enjoy doing, like working with the community that kind of... Yeah, I love that. Obviously, I, like, I enjoy giving the kids um, advice. Obviously, we, we've got amateur boxers, so I give them advice on obviously nutrition, what to eat after being weighed in, or I find out what the weight the day before the day of the boxing and tell them what they can eat before the boxing. And yeah, obviously, I love doing that and I love obviously watching them grow. We've, I've seen kids go from this big to, to that big and become obviously young, su- successful adults. So mm-hmm. yeah, I enjoy doing that. So you got back into boxing when you were 17. After a, a kind of a hiatus of a of a couple of years when you went and played football, so the road from getting in at at seventeen to turning pro in twenty sixteen, yeah. What was the um? 
how did that kind of how did that go? So from from turning seventeen, what was the what happened next? So obviously I was just boxing for Dalton ABC, um, just club shows in like workmen's clubs, and I went in the senior elite ABA finals, uh, senior senior elite ABAs, uh, boxed seven times to reach the final, um, boxed Anthony Fowler two thousand fourteen, got beat off Fowler. At, obviously that time he was like an elite. Commonwealth Games medalist, like an elite amateur. Um, a lot of people thought, I, even some of my friends, thought I was going to get beat. Like, there was, thought I was going to get stopped. Like, saying, oh, I can't believe, like, I thought you'd have been pulled out. I can't believe fighting him. Like, be careful, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I got beat off him. Um, and then I got a call for Great Britain to, right. to go down and do assessments. Went down there, done four assessments. And then they picked me for, for a place on... On, on on the team and then obviously I was part time based with Sheffield Monday to Thursday on oh no, sorry Thursday to Sunday coming home and then back up like a fortnight again Thursday to Sunday I was up there for about five weeks and then got moved straight on to podium the podium team so that's like where obviously with obviously AJ uh, Fraser Clark Joe Cordina um, all all them like Natasha, Natasha Jonas um, obviously all the, the elite obviously Fighters that have gone on to, to do great things, win world titles. So I was up there, I surrounded myself obviously by people that are on the same the same journey as me. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was great. You're getting paid to do it. You're traveling the world, doing what you love doing. So yeah, it was a, a team job really. Yeah. Um, boxer GB and a few in internationals. And then obviously it, it came to uh, the Olympics, the qualifiers for the Olympics. Obviously Fowler was number one. So he got he got the he got the nod to go to the uh, the qualifiers. He failed at the first one maybe. Um, he failed on the second. Not not percent sure, but then the third one, I got told if he was if he failed at the third qualifier, I'd go to the to the last qualifier. And obviously he he qualified in in that one. So yeah, obviously it was a a decision to make. It was either stay amateur for another four years because it was like a four year Olympic cycle. Yeah. Or turn professional and then. I was thinking like, I could have been in four years, so mm -hmm. yeah, it was no brain. Obviously, with no brain, I thought I was, was not getting any younger. I was twenty six, so I turned professional. Same with Frank Warren, and yeah, obviously the rest is history. Yeah. So how many? So you've had twenty four professional bouts. So I've had, uh, I think I've had twenty one, pro twenty one professional bouts. Uh, one loss, one draw. S so is that nineteen wins, one Nin loss, one draw? Nineteen wins, fourteen knockouts. It's a lot of knockouts, isn't it? Mm. So in terms of, um, you know, going from turning professional to now, what's the kind of, what what's the, what's it been like in terms of the kind of going up those levels? So has there ever been a, a, a kind of moment where you're like, you get a, a, get a bit of a, I know people get a bit of imposter syndrome, don't they? Where they get to a stage and they're like, it just all happened so quickly. Has there ever been, has there ever been a moment where, You've been quite overwhelmed by the situation. No, not really. Yeah, I f when I first turned pro, I like started off the ass, sort of down here. Like it's not like how it used to be, where unless you're winning like an Olympic let Olympic medal, you just, you can't pull it boom straight up here. So, I had to work the hard way. I was first couple of pro fights, I was selling tickets just to even get any like to get anything. So, you can imagine, it's, 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 like a lot of people don't want to give you fifty pound. To, to watch box, even though the, the even though the close mates, a lot of people don't want him, which I've noticed. I've always like I know who's who's support me and I know who's not. And right. like, there's a lot of clink, there's a lot of hangers on. Like, let's be, like to be completely truthful, like people that drive go down the town, put forty pound up the nose and give you forty pound for a ticket. Yeah, watch a box. That's how sad it is. So like, if it's 50, 50 tickets that pays for your opponent, your next fifty goes to the promoter, and then anything after that. That's if you're on a, a half decent deal, it's 50 50. So, if you sell 150 tickets, which from half, I believe, I think it's a, a lot of tickets. I, I know a lot of fighters who can't, who can't sell them. Um, and they're very good fighters as well. But you sell 150 tickets, you're only coming out with 300 quid. So, if you can imagine, like, you're doing a six, seven, eight week camp, I train in Middlesbrough, so you're driving up and down to Middlesbrough every single day. Yeah, your nutrition, your protein, your supplements, sparring gear. Run trainers that you need to change every three, four, five weeks. Like, 
what's for what where's the end of how I'm gonna get it's not gonna get you know what? Uh, yeah. Like sponsors, like I've not I've not I've I've only just started getting uh, a few sponsors, but they're only like I've got one full time sponsor, Dash Media, so I'll shout out to them because they've supported me right right from the start. See so, so yeah, like you see, people see you that you see on TV, you sign with Frank Warren, you blah blah blah. They think you're like they think you're some superstar, you think you got a lot of money, but only for, I believe it's only like three percent of the fighters out there that are getting serious money. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a it's a it's a hard sport, and you, a lot of it's coming out of your own pocket. Yeah. So it's in terms of it's doing like coaching stuff and and getting your sponsorships and stuff like that. That's the De- important thing. Yeah, definitely like sponsorships and things like that. But I believe so that I, I believe that comes like back up. I, I believe you, things that are like they're not they're not given. I think that the the hard earned like you've got to. You've got to do your apprenticeship, fighting like on all these local shows, and you got to like you also got to give back. Like I coach the kids, mm-hmm. I help out with the kids. So obviously when when, when I'm, I'm not on a ticket deal, luckily enough I'm not on a ticket deal, but I sell a lot of tickets. But right. just because I communicate with people, I associate with people, and people like you say, obviously, yeah, obviously I'm a nice guy. I think it's proven as well, though, isn't it? Like if you've nineteen nineteen wins, fourteen knockouts, you know, you know that if you're on the card, you know, they've got a, a 75% chance that you're going to knock someone out, which is what people are there for, essentially. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, it's 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 part of the sport, isn't it, people? But people, that is people what people want to see. People want to see blood, sweat and tears, and obviously that's me all over. That's, that's what I give them. Yeah. I give them, I give them all action. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I've got a really fan-friendly style, so I, I post tickets out to all from down the country. I have people come watch me all down from all over the country. Yeah. So I think it's you are obviously a hard hitter. I think that's probably been like from from the fights that that I've seen, and obviously that's the the one take the big takeaway that like the, 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 there is a chance of a, a big like knockout coming as well. So I think that obviously it helps bring the you know the more casual you know you get yeah, casuals yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it helps bring them more interested as well because that's obviously that was the the big thing with Anthony Joshua, wasn't it? that people thought that they were going to get a big knockout. Yeah. And that's obviously the, the allure of heavyweights. You know, you've got some amazingly tech, like, technically gifted, like, right down, like, bantamweight and stuff. But it's it's harder for fans to get behind yeah. who aren't necessarily, like, big technical boxing fans. Yeah, so, I agree. Yeah. No, unless you're, like, unless you enjoy boxing, then mm-hmm. you're going to enjoy them them lads fighting. Yeah. And like you say, Sonny Edwards, I think he's technically one of the most gifted boxers Present, mm. I think some of the things he does are like wow. How has he even done that? But like for I don't know for Tom Jones, who's just gonna not like if it's just anybody who's just sat there like watching TV, they're, like they're gonna think he's boring. Yeah, well, like Mayweather, but, like if you think yeah, about Mayweather, people, he's had... people say Mayweather like he runs and he's boring, but like say, unless you're a real boxing fan, then yeah, unless you want to see a ten round defensive yeah. masterclass. Then, and then you'll, you'll appreciate that sort of, that sort yeah, of style. Yeah, but most people want to see someone get knocked out. Yeah. I wish so. I had that sort of style. I never get punched and I never get beat, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, obviously, from turning pro to now, we've got our next fight coming up. How do we prepare for a fight? How What, what are you doing to, to get ready for your next fight? We don't know when it is, but oh, we can't say, but... Yeah, well, like obviously, I, I live in the gym. I'm a true professional. I, I, like, I don't go out drinking, don't smoke, don't drink, don't party. So I'm always in the gym, just taking over at a high level. Uh, so yeah, obviously, like if the call came and said that you can fight in three weeks, are you ready? I'll be ready. Is it just the weight? Is that the only yeah, thing you'd need to? Yeah, just the weight. Look heavy, like no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just that. That's it. Just the weight. But like, I try and keep my weight somewhere reasonable. Yeah, it, it is hard because. Are you three, three weeks out? Do you reckon you could? Are you always three weeks out? Do you reckon in terms of the weight? Um, is this like a secret? Can we can we talk about how much weight you cut? Uh, to, to, to be honest, I don't cut that much weight. Yeah, what do you walk out around at? You did you say you, do you fight one fifty five? One fifty four. But 154. To, to you, it will sound like a lot of weight, but to a boxer, it's not a lot of weight. Yeah, what do you what do you walk around at? What do you reckon? Oh, about thirty stone. Okay, so you cut about you cut about two stone. What's that? Thirty yeah, pounds. Yeah, but I, I, I obviously I don't cut. I don't cut two stone. So if, say if I if if they give me a fight in seven eight weeks, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd make it way easy. Yeah, because it's only water that you. Cut. Yeah, oh, you can lose the water. Yeah, Mate, so I've it's, seen. So it's only water. Like I drink six liters of water a day. It's only water you're cutting. Yeah, like to someone you think you put it in the 
Two stone. How are you going to lose two stone in that? Yeah. Place, Oh well, you could you could put on it. You could if you drank a two liter bottle of water now, you'd put on two kilos. Exactly. So it's like, uh, yeah, I, I get that totally. I mean, you see people like um, I don't know if you watch much of the UFC, but you see people yeah, like Alex Pereira sitting, sitting in saunas and wrapping. Alex Pereira goes from two like two thirty to one eighty five. Yeah. But back on the day, he's about two thirty again. He's a giant. So a lot, a, lot, a lot of people do it wrong. A lot of people do it like a lot of people crash diet and do it in a week. Yeah. Do you think if you wanted to, you could get to a lower weight? Lower than one five four. Mm-hmm. No, no. Is that no? Is that just yeah? If so you just your your style is then that you just never go too far past that. So you just eat well. You're a professional. You know you, you remember people like Ricky Hatton who were like yeah obviously, well yeah obviously I I go heavy but you'll never see me fat. No, I just feel like I put a lot of muscle on. I wasn't calling you fat there before by yeah, the way. Just nah. saying, <laughs> just nah, so you know. Yeah, and I, I never really go fat. I just I, yeah. I just my muscles fill up. Yeah. Yeah, I have a habit of trying not to uh, insult feel, professional like, boxers. Yeah, That's like I, one of my air rules for yeah. life. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll feel heavy and feel out of shape, but somebody will think yeah. it's fine. He's in good shape. Yeah, you'd be in the best shape of their yeah. life. <laughs> no, yeah, mate, I totally understand. But, um, well, I'm really excited to uh, watch your next fight. I uh, I wouldn't like to be that guy, you know, with, with you coming back off. Yeah, of... I wouldn't like to be that guy either because I'm coming back with a vengeance and I'm coming back to make dragon rights that I'm... Number, yeah, I'm num- number one in the division. Obviously, I just need to prove it again. Yeah, now. and then is it a case of you know a a route to um, getting that rematch as well? Is that something that possibly? I'm I'm not sure obviously on what Josh Kelly's plans are, but obviously I want I want the British title back. Yeah. Um, at one five one five four one sixty, I can compete at both sort of weights, and and I, I, I genuinely believe that I give any of them a hard night to work. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I think he gave him a hard night's work as well. I don't think anybody's looking at, coming away from that thinking that, you know, that you guys weren't the two best in the division. So it's um, yeah, he, he just he just boxed really well in the night, and on the night the better man won. Yeah, and you know I'm excited to see you kind of come back and take that British title back, and um, I'm like I said, looking forward to your next fight. And I hope to to see it released soon, mate. But yeah, thank you so much for uh, coming in and chatting with us. It's interesting yeah, to kind of uh, talk to you about like where you've come from and what you what you're up to. And it's really good to see someone from the northeast doing well. I think that's the the main thing. Yeah. So yeah, perfect. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, cheers. It's fun. You got big hands, haven't you? Look at the size of them things. <laughs>